Hey, I'm, I'm just going to get started. I'll introduce myself. I don't think most of you don't know me. Uh, David Barber. Um, I own blog.colorado.com, uh, promotion internet promotion. Do a lot of website work. Been on the board of directors of Colorado. It was the Colorado Music Association uh, when it was started. I was I was on the board, and I'm on the board again. Combo. Uh, but most of what I'm going to talk about today, I learned at Herman's Hideaway, where I worked at Door. And in addition to taking people's money when I, when they come in, I pay the bands at the end of the night. And I've seen over the years, uh, I've been working there for five or six. Before that, I worked at the Soil Dove, and before that, I worked at Brendan's Pub, and then back to the Dove again. And, and before that, I spent probably 20 years just hanging out in black music venues mostly listening to local bands and enjoying it. But I, over the years I've seen a lot of bands make a lot of mistakes. And um, some of them are just obvious. Uh, it should be common sense. But I found that a lot of new bands in particular and sometimes old bands have a lot of attitude. They just don't get it. Um, so all the stuff that I've had to tell bands over and over and over again that's what I'm talking about. Um, so some of it's going to seem kind of obvious, and it should. <laughs> and some of it, might, you might go, oh, I didn't realize that would be a problem. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it short because we don't have as much time as I'd like. Um, but feel free to interrupt with questions because that's where I think I'm best is when you guys ask me stuff. And then I can talk more in depth on whatever that happens to be, all right? Um, generally speaking, you know, the more status you have at the venue, the better you're going to get treated. If you come in, you know, it's new band audition night, you know, don't expect to be treated great, you know. If on the other hand, you're the V10 power band and, and you've got a following and, you know, you got a little bit of clout, you're going to be treated well. If you're the headliner, you're obviously going to be treated better by everybody in the staff. And, you know, for bands, you need to think about not just the booking guy and the sound guy, but think about the, the door staff and the bartenders and the servers, because they're all there, and if nobody came to see your band, they're not making any money either. And that's, that's important. Everybody wants a big crowd to come see your band, and because that way the club makes money, everybody has more fun, Everybody makes money. Um, you come in there with a lot of attitude, but nobody comes to see you. You know, it doesn't go over as well. And once you've got a proven track record, you know, you can pack that place every time. Then, you know, when you're uh, Hazel Miller, for example, she can pack the room. Um, you're going to get treated like gold. But when you're a, a new, uh, you know, maybe new band that just hasn't been playing out long, you got to earn that respect. And if, if you start out by treating the staff well. Um, it, and, and every venue is different. Every gig is different. There's a lot of different kind of gigs. I mean, you know, I, I work at live music venues, but, you know, you got your coffee shops and your churches and your, um, you know, everything from tiny little hole in the walls up to Red Rocks. You know, some of these things are all the same. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, before the gig, you know, when you when you're booking your gig, that's when you can clear up most of the problem right there. You know, if you've got a contract or at least a, a very clear agreement on things like how you're supposed to get paid, uh, are there drinks included with that? Uh, if the place serves food. Does everybody in the band get, get a free meal or not? Those kind of things, you know, it's best to get that all squared away ahead of time. Um, sometimes, if it's a gig that's not in a, a music venue, uh, you've got to bring your own sound system. Um, I'll tell you a story. Um, this was uh, probably 15 years ago. I had a friend. She actually worked for, uh, it was U.S. West at the time. And she got her gig in to the U.S. West company picnic in the middle of the summer. It was at uh, the Coliseum. 
Is that right? Yeah, the Denver Coliseum. Actually, the fairgrounds uh, where, they, where they do the stock show. And uh, she she calls up and she says, okay, we're playing. Does the place have a PA system in the room? And she talked to the wrong person because the person said yes. And it turns out the PA system that guy meant was for making like announcements over the public address system, not, not you know, something on a stage. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, the man shows up at the gig and there's no, no sound system. <laughs> and uh, there was another band that played the same gig who brought their own system and wouldn't share. And so my friend didn't get a play, basically, because you know, she asked the right question, she just asked, unfortunately, the wrong person. Uh, so when you're doing your booking, you want to find out all those kind of things, especially if it's a venue you're not familiar with. And I always recommend, you know, before you even try to book a place, if it's local, go down and check it out. You know, make sure it's the kind of room where the kind of band would work. You know, uh, there are some clubs that, that are love metal, and there are some clubs that like jazz. And, you know, unless they're trying to change up and do something different, the jazz band probably shouldn't even try to get booked in the metal club and vice versa. That's, you're just wasting the booking guy's time to do that. And, you know, I mean, if you hear that maybe they're looking to do something different, then okay, but don't waste your time, don't waste their time. Um, uh, rules. Uh, there's a few people here who look like you might be young, like under 21. Age restrictions is an important thing. And it's important to know that uh, there's the state laws and there's the city laws. And they're, and they're different. The, the cities are more restricted. And Denver is more restrictive than, say, Inglewood. And, you know, and there are mountain towns where they don't, they don't care. You know, <laughs> they don't enforce nothing. So it's good to know before and what the rules are. In the city of Denver, if you're under 21, you're supposed to have a work permit to, to perform in the venue. Now, some venues don't enforce that, and some venues do. Uh, but, you know, the important thing to the venue is their liquor license. If they don't have a liquor license, if they can't sell beer, they're going out of business. They got There's nothing they can do. So it's really important to most venues to make sure people under 21 are well regulated and controlled, even if they're going to let them in, you got to make sure they can't drink, and you know, you just want to follow the rules, because to see if Denver gets a hard on for a, a club, they'll shut them down, they'll find an excuse, and you do not want to be the excuse, because then that's one less venue for you guys to play, and God knows, even if they open back up, they're not going to want to book you again. Uh, promotion, I'm not going to talk about much. Just do it. If the venue tells you to do something like hand out tickets or sell tickets or whatever, do it. If you don't do it, they're going to know it's going to be obvious. And, you know, the more you can promote, the better it's going to go. You need people, you need butts in the, in the store or on the dance floor. That's, what it's, that's the entire attitude. Uh, of the venue is they want people in the club. For, for the venue owner sometimes it's no different than a strip joint and you guys are the strippers, okay? You got, you are the reason people are coming in to buy the overpriced drinks, period. I, I once talked to a strip joint owner and said, I'm not in the, the business of strippers, I'm in the business of selling beer. And you know, when you gotta pay seven bucks for a Budweiser, you quickly understand how he's making his money. <laughs> Okay, uh, good. go right into, okay, you, you got your gig booked, you promote it, you show up at the gig. Um, first thing you want to do is check in, make sure they know you're there. Uh, 